Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. Uh, so since the last episode, it hasn't been a whole lot of time. We're basically picking up shortly after uh, I did add in cocoa beans uh, over here. I haven't finished decorating those, but purely was wanting some cocoa beans. I was like, yeah, I should probably get those put in. But um, there's a pretty good chance, though, later this episode, we will probably end up setting up some of our aquatic crop area uh, because I'm going to want seaweed being farmed because today I believe we are going to start into create now we do have this fireball spell I'm not for sure if this is going to damage stuff inside of our claim chunk I'm going to guess probably because it's us doing the exploding uh, but let's find out here because this sand's going to go it doesn't Perfect. Okay, we're going to try this out, and we're going to try it out cheaply first with something that uh, we don't mind losing as much. But if we take a look at andesite alloy, uh, this is going to take any kind of andesite and some iron. Uh, we do have TNT if we have to use it. Is this only, does this only make one? It does. So this is going to actually take a lot of iron starting to create. Um, though we could probably... There's the clockwork honeycomb, but uh, the mixer is actually excessively cheap. So honestly, if we can do this just on demand with the fireball spell, uh, then it's not as important that we make a big batch necessarily. We can try to nickel and dime it to save our iron a little bit, only kind of make what we need, uh, which will be good. I don't know why I'm coming all the way out here, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go ahead... Toss these down. It does work. Awesome. Okay, so in that case, we're going to start off with a quarter stack. And we'll see where this gets us to. I think one might have burned up. That's okay. I'm not that worried about it. And is there a, there is a tab here for create. Let's go ahead and get our wrench. And it looks like we have... Some checkmark quests. We're going to go ahead and get these out of the way. And then they want us to get 16 shafts. Let's go ahead. There we go. And I know the mechanical mayhem quest, they want us to make Invar, rare create loot box, and we get kelp. So there you go, Xavian. <laughs> if you just did your quest, you'd get kelp. He was asking uh, the other day about, it was, it was yesterday, he was asking about... Uh, if anybody had any kelp, and I suggest that he just go with the B, because you can do the water B, uh, and you can get kelp from that, just using the manual centrifuge. Uh, and that's the method that I was originally planning on doing, but we actually get it from a quest, so that works out pretty well. Uh, okay, and now we're going to need cogwheels. Before we do that, what is the recipe for, like, let's say water wheels? They're large cogwheels. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get ourselves, uh, we'll start with four, because they want it for the quest, and then while we're at it, these are cheap enough, let's go ahead and get some small ones too, because these quest rewards here seem like they're going to be pretty decent, what did we get? Oh, wow, andesite casings, okay, <clears throat> we were actually going to have to make these, because we need them to unlock the gate. And we get another create loot box from that. What did we get? Uh, I think it was another analog lever, actually, from that one. Uh, so in that... Oh, they want a, a gearbox. Okay. Well, we can do a gearbox. And we'll end up needing them, so might as well. There we go. The gate is out of the way. And we actually get another loot box here. We got tree fertilizer. Okay. Uh, I can actually make use of that. Oh, and we got super glue too. Okay, so on to the water wheel. We're not going to bother with uh, doing the hand crank because that just sounds terrible. I do have acacia slabs. Let's go ahead and get ourselves four water wheels. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Now we need to figure out where we're going to set this up. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to run them right through here. I'm probably going to go ahead and make like two more. Uh, just so they fit into here for now. Uh, this probably will get brought out a bit. We're going to have our water wheels set up right here. 
And then we're going to have the water, of course, flow down and around. Uh, now let's go ahead. Well, let me block off this. Uh, and actually, this side will be sandstone. This side, we're going to go ahead. Let's grab one of our shafts. We're going to run that through. And then we are going to do... Uh, just go ahead and do an andesite casing on it. Uh, now let me go ahead and get two more water wheels. And we'll go ahead and get some cogs because I imagine we're probably going to want to up the speed on this too. Uh, so we might as well do that. Okay, and we'll go ahead and run that out. And then of course on top of that I'm going to do one of the gold ones. I've got to smelt up more gold and I'm just kind of like, I've got some more gold. I just haven't gotten around to smelting it just yet. I think. I might have a little bit left that's smelted up, but... Uh, okay, so now I want to, I'm going to reverse these, because we want the the blades of this to face in this direction, not into that direction, so, because uh, we're going to have the water flowing around it like that. And it's funny, by the way, because some of these work as infinite water sources, mainly the ones on, like, the south side of the base. The rest of these, if I take water out, they don't actually uh, replenish the water. Like, it's really, really weird. Uh... And it doesn't really have to do, I don't think, with direction. Because I was thinking at first, I was like, well, it seems like maybe they're direction-based. Like, if I try to take water out here, you can see it doesn't update. Like, it's really bizarre. I've never encountered that before. And we'll go ahead and keep speeding these up. Uh, once they're sped up all correctly, we should be producing 256 stress units per water wheel. Because uh, we're hitting it on all sides. All possible sides. Maximum possible sides. And now we got over 1,500 stress units through our water wheels. I mean, granted, water wheels they don't tend to be very powerful. But if you don't use these and instead you push on to either of the other power sources, you will never want to use these. Uh, so we're going to go with water wheels. Plus, you know, we're going to be using a lot of water in our base. So it does kind of make sense. But we will have wind and stuff too. Desert's always got a lot of wind. So it just makes sense. Okay, so now that we've got mechanical power, um, I imagine we're probably going to want to shoot for the mixer, like, first thing. Or the millstone and mechanical print. Yeah, all that stuff's pretty good. We do get a scavenger's delight. This keyboard squeaks. It's this new keyboard, because it's got an armrest, but I keep the armrest put away. Uh, Drig me shards and gunpowder. And uh, it squeaks whenever I push it, like readjust it or anything. Uh, I did notice something really, really cool. You take a look at the recipe for Mechanical Crafter. Uh, or no, it's not Mechanical Crafter. It is the flywheel. I was looking at that. It takes a carbuncle charm. So, like, theoretically, you know, I'm thinking, like, hamster on a wheel kind of thing with the flywheel. And I just, I'm assuming that's what they're meaning with it. And I think it's the most, like, <laughs> like, I don't know, awesome recipe ever. Like, it's just really, really unique. Oh, good God. There we go. How about you? Okay, so back over to the us. Uh, we're going to need a quite a few iron plates here. Uh, so it's going to take us 10 iron. Luckily, I'm not really having a shortage of iron, though I might end up doing some mining here soon because we will end up needing that. Uh, okay, so to get our hammer, I think it's just two sticks and string, actually. Uh, we're going to go that recipe, probably. Well, two, two sticks string and iron I mean but yeah let's just go with the engineer's hammer that sounds good I don't know the other hammer might be better might have more durability or something 128 100 okay they're the same thing this one takes an iron nugget though so technically I guess this one's a little bit cheaper and then we can get our whisk and then we just need the casing and the cog wheels and the bay oh yeah the basin yeah I'll have to make a little yeah, we're going to need five for that. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just make two more. By the way, we did get the treble hooks uh, trinket, so we can get triple rolls from fishing. So, got that between between episodes. And there is our basin. Okay, uh, and then at this point, let's go ahead, let's get our andesite out. I'm going to have to mine up a little bit more andesite here shortly. And I will probably have to boost the speed. So I've got shafts, I've got small cog wheels, large cog wheels too. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and do a large cog wheel right there. We're going to do a small cog wheel coming off of that. And then we're going to bring this out again. 
and basically repeat that same thing. So large cog wheel, small cog wheel, and now we're spinning. Now I'm gonna wanna actually bring this over because we're gonna be crafting right over here. So we're gonna set up some gearboxes and probably have these cogs visible through this, uh, maybe some slats or something like that. But for right now, we do have one gearbox. Okay, no, let me, let me break this down real quick. Let's have a vertical gearbox there and then have that coming down. This is, once again, this is just kind of a temporary thing, but we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna have our mixer setting right there and then the basin there. Okay, so now we're gonna take, didn't I, I thought I had two more. Okay, I just got the 14. Let me build this up slightly. We're going to go ahead and toss in our andesite and our iron nuggets. And our mixer is going to start going at this point and making us our andesite casings. Or andesite alloy, I mean. So this way we don't have to manually make it because that method was fine. I mean, it's easy with this, but it's also extremely wasteful too because it's a, it's a whole iron ingot. But this is almost done at this point. And with this, we'll make it a little bit a little bit better, but right now I just want to get to where we can actually make our andesite alloy. Uh, okay, now the millstone, we might as well go ahead and get this out of the way. Actually, can we use the mechanical press to make like plates and stuff cheaper by chance? Because that would be great if we could. I imagine it'll be under pressing. Yes, we can. Yeah, we definitely want this then too. Yeah, I'm about to put something under this keyboard so it doesn't squeak. It's like, it doesn't, I mean, it's not a big deal, it just, or I guess I could pull out the armrest too, but I think I'm just going to put something underneath it. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead, this is going to be copper gear, we're going to need four copper ingots, uh, four aluminum nuggets, and then uh, iron plate. Let's see, what about the mechanical press in the depot? Huh. Yeah, let's do the mechanical press first. We'll save a little bit. We won't have to use the hammer for making our plates. But I will need buttons. Is there a cheaper way? Uh, sawing. Uh, it's the same though. Same output. Once we get sequence assembly, that's going to be a lot better. Uh, which we're going to definitely, definitely want a lot of sequence assembly in this pack. Let me go ahead and get 16 of those though. And we'll go ahead and get our mechanical press. And then let's go ahead and get our depot. Because that way we can make plates one to one. Um, the only thing is my layout is a little bit janky at the moment, but I guess I can do this. This is temporary, I promise. We're just going to get the means to cheaply and efficiently upgrade and not worry too much about it looking great right this second. Okay, so let's go ahead and just turn these into plates. Um, I'm half tempted to go ahead and get a fan too, just so we can smelt this a whole lot cheaper, right? Yeah, let's just do that too. Then we're going to get our encased fan. And then we're going to need a bucket of lava. Which is funny, I don't think I've seen lava uh, so far this game. So, actually I'll tell you what, over there, I'm not ready to like build a proper mine. But I know over where we were digging this big destruction of the world that I've created over here. We're going to head over to that. Uh, because I remember that there's a big ravine that runs through there that, that one creeper fell down in last episode. I just gotta remember where it was at, because honestly, I don't remember. See, I see some lava over in that direction. Also, while I'm here, I should probably go ahead and grab some andesite as well. Oh. Well, maybe not a great idea there, because I didn't bring an extra pick with me, but... Uh, and it seems like it mined all the other stone types. It should be like right underneath our feet. And I can always use more sand. Yeah, I hear it. I mean, we could start into Tetra right now. We will at some point. I just, I don't like, I'm not a big fan of tool mods like that. Um, and so we'll get around to it at some point, but not right now. I think it would probably be for the best if I made another gearbox. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and get two more. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and get ourselves a vertical gearbox. We're going to put it in right there. Let's bring this out just a little bit. Let me get another depot. 
and then let's have our encased fan now of course this is all just temporary we want it blowing off in this direction and we'll have our depot right there and then just to make sure that we don't ever step in front of this because it's going to be very very hot but then we're going to go ahead and put our lava in right there i'm sorry not right there right here and then that's going to start being able to cook anything that gets put on this depot uh, so now if we were to take some of our aluminum let's just take like four and we just put that onto the depot and we give it a moment it's going to cook it and smelt it for us for free there we go extremely efficient smelting at this point okay so now to actually get our millstone what we've been working on we're going to need a little bit of copper uh, we can get our copper gear and then i'm going to need the stone slabs let me go grab some cobble there we go and we'll get a few slabs and then we will get our millstone okay and this we could honestly just put it right there uh, it's going to give us a 25% chance for extra crushed iron and a 5% chance for some crushed nickel. But let's see, do we want to put this, yeah, let's put this in a little bit more of a convenient spot, because right where it's at, it's terrible. Of course, all this stuff is a bit of a mess right now. Let's see, let's go ahead and just set that up. And that way we can have our millstone right here. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves a hopper. I only have the one at the moment, but that's okay. Uh, now, the crushing wheels are going to be a little bit better, but I think they're a little bit more costly because we're going to need the mechanical crafters, which means we are going to have to get quartz, but that's okay. We've gotten the most important machines for right this very second. And that way we can start crushing down these iron chunks. And you can see we got some crushed iron ore and we got some crushed nickel from that one. We got two crushed iron ore, and then that crushed iron ore, we should just be able to smelt on the fan. Yeah, we can do the crushed iron ore, and we can turn that into iron. Not to mention making dusts, like our iron dust, nickel dust, stuff that we're going to need for crafting, we can make it through the millstone too. So what did we start with? 20, I think? 20 iron ore? Alright, there we go. Uh, so from like 20 iron ore, I think, we got 28 crushed iron and 4 crushed nickel. Great, and then we'll just go ahead and smelt this up. And now we can process our iron quite a bit easier. And everything else for that matter. So we could start uh, we could start running our aluminum and stuff through. Which speaking of for aluminum, uh, it's a five percent chance to get iron, and then of course chance to get that extra aluminum. There we go, there was our iron ingots. Alright, now at this point, let's go ahead get ourselves another 47 and a side alloy and then for the quest uh, I need to take down the mechanical press real quick just so we can get the rest of these quests turned in and then I'm gonna need the mixer it actually shouldn't hurt for me to do that no it fell into here there we go Luckily, the millstone can't do anything with the mixer, so. And we'll go ahead and get that running again. All right, now what do we get from our quest rewards? Uh, what was that? Analog levers. Getting a lot of analog levers. Not going to have to make any of those, but they are extremely useful. And then we are going to get powered toggle latches, also very, very useful. And, oh, we, we need the bison. And we got ourselves more power toggle latches. So we're getting a lot of this kind of stuff, which is fine by me, because that's stuff that uh, we'll probably end up using for something. There is our alloy. So we've got 53 of that on hand at this point. And now, with gearboxes and shafts and cogs, since we can make all this stuff extremely easy, it should be a good time to go ahead and work on setting this up into a little bit more of a permanent setup because uh, this is just kind of a big jumbled mess at the moment uh, but let's go ahead we're going to make ourselves a windmill at this point and the windmill sails sail frames perfect okay 
Uh, I am going to need a bit of wool. I don't have my sheep set up just yet, but luckily it doesn't matter because we have tons of sources of string. Glad I got a bunch of roadrunners coming up because I'm going to end up wanting those before too long. And then we'll go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of wool. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves some cell frames. Honestly, 32. What they want for the quest should be sufficient for us for right now. I do have wool. Oh, it has to be. Oh, it has to be rock wool. I totally missed that. Uh, we can get that from smelting gravel, though. Okay. And I'm going to need basically four pieces. I've probably got four pieces of gravel. I do. Now, can I do this in the, like, bulk blasting or something? Yeah, we can. Okay, well, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and just make up a bit. I can always go get gravel really, really easy. And then we'll be able to make our rock wool. I totally missed that. I thought it was just, like, regular wool, you know? All right. Now... We can get our sails. So there's that. Uh, now, in addition, we are going to need a windmill bearing, which is a sticky piston. I don't know if I have any slime balls, but I do know where sky slime are. Okay, actually, what we can do, which is even easier, let's go ahead and get ourselves some wheat. All right, let's go ahead. I think it's above, actually. Yeah, let's go ahead and get ourselves some wheat dough. And then we're going to need to get ourselves some lime dye. So let's go ahead out here. Let's grab our lime flour. Go ahead and break that down. And I'll just replant that. And let's get our pestle and mortar from Batania. And we'll go ahead and convert these over into lime dye. And then we just combine that with our wheat dough. And boom, we got slime balls. And there's our sticky piston. So there's our turntable. There's our windmill bearing. And then they also want the radial chassis. So there is our radial chassis. And then let's go ahead. What did we get from the quest? Super glue. And epic create loot box. What did we get from that? Oh, we got brass. Oh, that's nice. Brass casings. That's really, really good. Well, let's go ahead. We're going to pop over because this is going to be a windmill. Uh, and then we're going to have the windmill bearing setting right here. Uh, we'll have the radial chassis there. This, oh, it has grown. Okay, perfect. Uh, are you going to get all of it? Yes, perfect. Yeah, because I think it does like two stacks in this pack, so it's most likely that we'll be able to get the, the spruce every time. And we do need to make the chassis sticky. So let's click there. I guess if we were using sails, we wouldn't have to. But All right, so now at this point... Okay, it is spinning, but what about the... Ah, see, it does that thing. The frame blocks, they lose their texture. That's what I was thinking of, because I tried to use them on Spellbound for our windmill, and I couldn't because of that very reason. They lose their texture whenever it's spinning, so... Uh, so I'll have to I'll have to sort out something a little bit different for that, and I'll figure out something for that. But let's go ahead, and I'm probably going to dye all of these brown, maybe. And we might bring them up in the corners a little bit. Honestly, I think it kind of needs to come out a little bit further, to be honest. And that's only 32 sails at the moment. Uh, we can boost the speed by a lot more just by sticking more sails on it. Make some more sails. Uh, and I am going to... I'm going to spruce this up and do a bit of building and build out the rest of this little structure uh, here in just a moment. Then I've got to move our big mess of contraptions over to this. But before we do that, there is one thing I would like to maybe get set up. It just dawned on me, these windmill blades, they need to be turned sideways. That's okay. I'm thinking about removing the bottom structure, the wood, and having it be a post that goes up instead because this whole big turning structure is kind of weird. Uh, we'll change that here in a bit. Uh, okay, so at this point, I've got to build that out, but I want to do something to make it a little bit easier for us, I think. Though it is going to be a little bit costly up front, but it's going to pay off in the long run. Uh, we are going to get ourselves a mechanical drill. 
and I'll probably just have a little like rigged set up uh, at the moment. We will make it a bit better. Why do I have so many hearts? Oh, I bet it's nutrition. Yeah, because we're starting to break that 80 mark on a lot of the stuff. Dietary effects. We have plus two attack damage, plus one armor toughness, plus three max health, plus one knockback resistance, plus 20% attack speed. Oh, I like that. There is our mechanical drill. Is there a quest for that by chance? Yeah, it's over behind the chassis and stuff. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't need a chassis for what I'm planning on setting up. But at this point, we are going to go mining. Let's go ahead. Let's pop over to Crew Mimar. And we're going to take this waystone. This is that little village that's uh, kind of over near our old base somewhat. Let's just set this to small tunnel. And let's go ahead. Boom. All safe down here. Actually here, quite a bit of mobs. Oh. There's spawners down there. Find a buried dungeon. Okay. Okay, this looks like it's going to be a pretty nasty place. But now, the bonus is that technically we're invisible. Well, ish. They saw us. I've noticed some mobs, it takes them a bit longer to see me, but... Luckily, I can easily get away from them. Like that. And there's probably not going to be any mobs that can... Uh, that can find us. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, I'm going to block that off for just a moment. Let's check out our loot. We did get some gold ore. Some gold ore here as well. Oh, actually a lot of gold ore. Potassium nitrate, which is basically what we need for Fido Grow. We also need uh, appetite, but it's fairly common. We've actually came across it. I just didn't mine it at the time because I didn't have any real use for it. But it tends to it tends to be fairly common. Now, what do we have in here? Cavalier when riding something. So we can ride a pig into battle. All right. Tilling. Tills the Oh, man. That's going to be nice. Uh, a Leviathan map. I'm going to fill up my inventory because I came out. I was just expecting to mine down and do my thing. And then I hit a dungeon, of course. Uh, we got Impaling. Okay, we'll take it. It's not that great, though. I really don't need all of this, though. I'm going to leave some of this stuff behind. Like, red sand, I really don't need. One piece of andesite, I really don't need. All right, so let's go a little bit farther in, maybe. Still with this big guy. There we go. Invisibility is actually quite nice because they don't notice us for some time. Actually should get out of there though for just a moment. Oh, just to get our health back up. It's that fire that does it. That's why I tend to dislike fire aspect usually because of that very reason. But okay, this is safe now. Let's see what we got. We got a bow with True Shot 5. Crescendo of Bolts. Impaling. Snowy Temple Map. And what do we got in this one? Life Mending 2. Yes, please. Bulwark. It's another thing I really love. Uh, another set of chain mail. I guess not really that valuable. I don't really care about any of that. Let's just keep going. Because I am somewhat limited on inventory space. Hey, Ice Shard. What is this? Uh, Frostwalker. Okay. Meh. Maybe a certain... That's more of... That's another one of those, like, really situational ones. Ugh. There is a monster box in this one. 
Oh, that room is just filled with nasty. I'm going to leave that room for now. We can come back. It's super easy to get to, but it's not like I even have inventory space right now. And I'm just going to make sure this room here is lit up. Uh, so we shouldn't have to worry about mobs in this one, which is the room that we would come down in. So, All right, so now at this point, we're going to go ahead and just pop down to about right here is good. And we're going to be looking for some diamonds real quick. And technically, we did bring this waystone down here. So I'm just going to put... Asgard mining here uh, for now and this will be kind of our temporary mine shaft we will get a more proper one and that way I can warp home here in a minute because I'm gonna have to go make more picks like right now I uh, see diamonds there we go now, I don't have any fortune or anything like that right now that's fine right now I just need diamonds this is a pretty nice little spot I think oh come on you can have more diamonds than that. Nope, just two. I do have one back at home, but... Okay, I see more diamonds. Now we're starting to find them. It took me a little bit to find them. Okay, so we got four out of that. Cool, so one more diamond node and we should be good to go. Okay, here we go. I have hit diamonds. There we go. I got enough diamonds now for what I want. I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of these, though. Like I said, there's uh, another thing I'd like to make that does take two diamonds, and this is going to give me enough, actually. We're going to make ourselves a diamond block. Okay, so what we're going to do is... We're going to put down our diamond block right here, and then basically we're going to be building a cobble gin. So we're going to put the basket right there. I guess it would be good if I blocked off that side. Uh, it doesn't... Oh, stone generator not. Uh, so in that case, if we take a look, this is getting the items. It doesn't seem like it's burning. So since this has to be a stone generator, I'll have to rework things slightly. We'll put the water right back here. And then we'll just have the lava sitting right up here. So this should start producing smooth stone, but instead it's going to produce diorite, red arid sandstone. Let's see, what all kinds of stuff. Wow, this is amazing. Wow. I thought it was just going to, because I clicked on sandstone and I was like, information. I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. Didn't realize it was going to produce everything. Oh, we're getting alabaster. Oh, I'm getting so many good desert building materials, like arid sandstone, alabaster, void stone man okay uh yeah in this case what do we need? what do we need for a drawer controller processor probably have to wait on that a little bit but this thing is amazing this is actually amazing i think this is like some kind of custom cobble gin thing i've never heard of such and i love it i love it this is so nice okay so what we're gonna do uh what's it take for like big old chests that's just gold that's just diamonds uh -huh. i'm kind of limited right now on what i can actually afford i'll tell you what i'm gonna do for right now because i'm not i can't swing the diamonds but i can swing other stuff we can go for gold chests and we're going to double layer them and i think that's going to be good we're going to be just producing all sorts of materials it seems like let me go ahead and run honestly like eight will be fine for just a minute so it does produce sandstone it's just not 100 percent of the time so it's not as powerful for my build as i was originally thinking it would be but that's okay it is extremely good though because i mean we're producing all sorts of stuff from this totally worth the nine diamonds and especially chunk loaded with the drawer system i mean like i said i can't really i can't really swing the drawer system right now but let's go ahead and set that up and that way we can start pulling the items the the alabaster the arid sand a lot of this stuff's gonna be really good for my build like really really good 
And I mean, later on we can speed it up, we can scale it out, that sort of thing, but... But yeah, regardless, that is going to be extremely nice for us. And then this hopper will grab all the stuff and send it down to here. We're getting quark limestone, pink sandstone, wow. Okay. Now I will probably end up moving this, you know. But, like, over to there or wherever. But, uh, yeah, this is... This is going to do the trick for us, because I thought, well, I'll use this till I can till I can switch over to Liquid Starlight, you know. No, <laughs> this is totally different. This isn't just going to make sandstone. This is going to make all sorts of things. Oh, I love it. Okay, so in that case, we're going to go ahead, actually, and go with the method that Mark Ward brought up and have that as a, a sandstone generator on the side, uh, just producing sandstone. Maybe add a few more, but... I think between that and our like super crazy, our super crazy cobble chin, I think it'll do the trick for us. All right, so let's go ahead, make ourselves a couple hoppers, and this we'll be able to use our drawer for, so that'll be good. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves a basic fluid tank, that'll be fine. And let's take a look at the controls for mechanism. Item mode switch. Let's set it to something really obscure. We're going to hold, we're going to hit uh, that and we're going to set it to bucket mode. Let's go to this lava area here. Uh, there we go. We have 32,000 millibockets. And we're going to pop back over. Let's see, where do we want to set this up at? I'm usually really, really weary of nether portals in packs because you never know what's going to walk out of the nether portal if it's only going to be zombie pigmen or if you're going to get other stuff. So I might set this up just a little ways away from us for now until we kind of get an idea of what's coming out of it. Though we do have all that invisibility, which is good. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. We're getting permafrost from Quark. Oh my god. I love it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make basically a big cast. I've shown I've shown I'll, I've shown this off before. Actually, I think we used it for when we were rushing for the Gaia, right? Doing like our Gaia speed run thing forever ago. But we tend to do this pretty much in any pack where we don't have a lot of diamonds and we want to go to the nether, basically. Uh, oh, don't wash the world away. And of course, mechanism tank makes it even easier because we don't even need a bunch of buckets. We can just do a little something like this. Okay, so now basically we have a nether portal. And then, uh, let me change this back. We're doing a lot of other stuff that I wasn't originally intending to do this episode, so we may not get to building that. But that's okay. We do have ore processing, free smelting, the mixer, all that stuff. It's still very important for us, but there's a part of me that wants to leave you chunk loaded. This will be like my first chunk load. Basically, this stuff. Like that. Something like that, yeah. I don't think it's going to spew items into the world whenever it stops. But I'll be on for a little bit, so it's not a big deal, I guess. Oh, cool. I'm glad I got this. What is this? This is like the worst possible spawn you could ever ask for in the nether. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, let's, uh, let's do this. Now, I need to find soul sand. Man, there's a lot of magma cubes here. I gotta find soul sand. We need to start bees up here soon, too. But, I mean, at first glance, I mean, the nether doesn't seem, like, super awful. I am really happy we ended up with awesome spawn. Oh, actual gold ore spawns here. Oh, there's somebody's nether portal. They spawned in a lava lake. Let's see if we can just float over there to theirs.
There we go. I love this umbrella. Spawning into the Basalt Delta is awful. I'm just, I'm really glad that we've got the umbrella because this makes it a whole lot more manageable. Seems like somebody went up this way, it looks like. Probably trying to escape this nightmare. Oh, there's another fortress. Nifty. Do we want to try to go up there? Because I feel like it's a really bad idea. But then again, there might be treasure. I know we're going to have to come up here at some point for blazes, though. Yeah, there's already blazes. Well, that's not really what I'm here for. But what I am here for could be there. Let's just head on in. Uh, luckily, we are semi-invisible. You know, unless we get right up on them, they're not going to notice us. So we can just kind of be stealthy through here. And that should work. Honestly, I should have brought our blaze catcher thing for create. For the mixer. But I didn't. Here's what I want. Yay, we can farm nether wart now. And I'm going to go ahead actually grab this soul sand. I'll leave the other, the rest of it for anybody that needs it. You know, I don't like taking everything. Um, but I am going to need a little bit of it at least. Yeah, I can just block this all day. There we go. We got a blaze rod. Well, while I'm here, I would like to get some glowstone because I'd gotten some... Basically, like, from chests and things, but I don't have much, you know, and I actually, I actually do need some. All right, so we got to be a little bit careful here, but what I'm going to do, let me get a little bit closer. We're going to do that. Activate our magnet, pull it in. Okay, well, this is good enough. I've got enough soul sand, so we'll just warp back. All right, well, we got that. And so what we're going to do, let's see. Oh, look at our nutrition right now. It's so good. Okay, what are our dietary effects? Plus five to max health, plus one to knockback resistance. We could technically get it just a little bit higher. Like get it all up to 100%, but yeah, that's nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Let's get our drawer. And I am going to need a single piece of sandstone. And thank you again, Mark Ward, for bringing this up because this is going to come in super handy. I never knew this was a recipe. To me, this is the most random, bizarre thing. Apparently, if you use cobblestone instead of sandstone, it makes gravel, uh, which is kind of nifty too. How much? Yeah, see, we haven't got a ton of sandstone. We've done all right, though. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, let's set up a hopper, I mean a drawer, uh, let's set it up like right here, we'll try to keep it all in the same like chunk loady type area, and then we're going to have our hopper, no I'll need to move this out, yeah I mean this won't be pretty but it'll work, uh, let's do that, okay right here what we're going to do is we're going to put sandstone right above our soul sand, right there. And then we're going to set up an infinite water source right here. Uh, so let me go get a little bit of water. I know this is probably like the most confusing thing, but basically if water is above soul sand and below sandstone, it makes sand that just like spawns there. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use that as a sandstone generator and basically just let it be chunk loaded and create lots and lots of sandstone for us. It takes it a little bit. Uh, now this is something that's really just gonna have to like run while I'm offline to generate enough. Okay, yeah, it, it made it there, but I'm gonna need a block. Put that in there. We're gonna have to do that because it throws the block out. But you, you saw it made like a falling block. That's what happens. And then it sits there for a second. Like right now there's a falling block. 
I mean, it's not super fast, but it does produce this automatic sand, and it's something that we can leave running, especially with this being a server. Technically, we could go a lot bigger with it. I don't know that it's really worth that, because it's, I think it's going to be slow regardless. We're going to be setting up this one too. It makes sandstone. Uh, so that's even better. I'll leave the other thing set up for the sand, because I've got like a slow passive source of sand, uh, which of course is a little bit different than sandstone. So yeah, we'll go with that then. We'll just get another mechanical drill in that case. I've got the lava. We'll go ahead and get the water. Because let's see, they gave us um, this kelp. I don't need a ton of it to start my uh, kelp farm. Oh, I have iron here too. Okay, I didn't realize I had that over here. Get our dried kelp. This will just be a little bit easier to go this route. For setting up our drill, we should have enough stress units to power both mechanical drills. Alright, so... We could actually probably just have it be off the same line. So we'll just set up the mechanical drill. And then we just got the one source of water flowing in both both directions there. There we go. And then we'll have the drawer system right here. Then let's go ahead, put in the lava. And then we just need to basically run our mechanical belt over. We'll put our shaft in here and we'll run that over and that way that can start drilling and we're going to start getting sandstone this is going to be a lot better method for us for making sandstone and then this system over here will just slowly be making us sand block of iron with a vanilla cobblestone generator makes a bunch of other stuff aha uh -huh. what do we think do we want to do another another one I just keep making call. This has become like, it went from create to just making cobble gems. I am going to have to go, go get some uh, honeycombs, but I know where some's out. We do have combs in this. I think all my bees like flew off or died. Uh, sooty honeycombs. Yeah. Ivory travertine. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. I just love this. Because I've just got, like, basically super building materials of all different sorts. So, we'll be able to uh, basically build with stuff, like, from the Undergarden or Atom or, you know, whatever. After we just give this stuff a little bit of time to build up. And I find that to be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Like, we've got Flavolite. Ha. Ah. Red arid sandstone. Red sandstone comes from this. And we could probably produce it. I mean, any of these materials now. Okay, I ended up switching this over to uh, a one by 2 drawer instead. Uh, because it was producing cobblestone, it was actually starting to back up. Uh, but you can see we do have about 20 stacks of sandstone. So that's good. Uh, this has been kicking away for a little bit. Honestly, I've been like half AFK just editing footage and stuff. I end up racking up a lot more time on here because I'm like AFK and then I hang out and I chat while I'm editing and stuff and whatnot. But you can see we've got a ton of different stone in here. I'm probably not going to leave this chunk loaded just to be on the safe side uh, and just let it run while I'm on um, for just a little bit longer. Technically, I could make a void upgrade, but I want to make sure that we've got maybe pl plenty of aluminum. I may change my mind, but I'd like to at least mine up a little bit more aluminum before I before I spend it all on void upgrades just to be on the safe side but at this point we do have two extra diamonds we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a mega torch since I don't have doors and I want my oasis to be safe we're gonna we're gonna have ourselves a nice mega torch right here perfect uh, so it's going to keep any mobs from spawning of course in a massive massive radius and you can see that I have changed this up I'm thinking about bringing it out like one more block and probably dying the cells brown actually speaking of i had yeah right here i've got rock wool uh but i think this is just going to be better for us so of course i just super glued all the way up uh with our super glue except for the very top one apparently gg me okay one second let's activate this again and i've got to move all of our create stuff uh we've kind of ran out of episode out of time this episode this wasn't what i was originally planning on doing is like 
a ton of cobble geons. I was planning on focusing on create, but I got a little bit sidetracked for building materials. We need to switch the direction of that. Uh, let me go grab my wrench. Oh, and if you want to say, uh, well, they dropped just a little bit. They were actually at 100% on all of them, but I don't think it matters. This is the same stats as before, but you can see we got plus two attack damage, plus one armor toughness, plus five max health, plus one knockback resist, plus 20% attack speed for having uh, like high-end nutrition. Uh, so anyways, we're going to switch the direction of this so that it's flowing in a logical manner. And I still have to decorate it and stuff, but that gives you kind of an idea and I did bring it up just a little bit taller. I think it just looks better. Uh, and then we got to do the roof here. And then I think maybe either an overhang or another section of this building uh, there. And then we'll have our create stuff inside. Our basic, it'll be like a early basic create workshop, more or less. Uh, and I'll just work on decorating that a little bit uh, between episodes. Now, before we end out this episode, I know we're running probably a little bit past wrapping up point but let's go ahead let's turn in this quest and this quest we got an alchemist delight and a scavenger's delight we got eye of the blaze four of those that's actually not super useful to us now but it would have been if we hadn't found another fortress uh we got leather and we got sylph shards and we've actually got a quest here we get pulse repeater and adjustable repeater I love both of those. And then over here, we get some copper chunks. Seven of them. Next episode, we'll probably just set up a like an automatic ore processing. So it goes millstone, then to depot for the, for the smelting, and then it gets pulled out, you know. Anyways, I know that it is wrapping up point for sure. Um, so we're going to pick back up next episode. Like I said, originally we weren't going to be doing cobble chins, but then we just had to. Now we've got building materials, though. So, yay. And we got like alabaster and stuff coming in, which is really exciting because, you know, it kind of goes with what we're doing here. So, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.